Double down for it.
Hey, how are you, sir? Mm. Okay.
Buddha. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you able to get me? I don't know somebody can say something because my head is. Yes, we can hear. All right, all right, all right. Yes, we can hear. Bon, pardon. Yeah, I actually thought my the timetable says we, should, we always start class at uh, fifteen thirty, but unfortunately, like I'll just call the one of your colleagues that uh, the class at fifteen. So next week, I'll try. I'll try to to be on time. So, I don't need on that one. I think I'm. We yeah, are very, very busy. It's late. Okay, so. Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to connect PDF. Okay, that's a
kind of get uh, difficult when to make these things. Okay. So, do you have uh, questions from the previous TD? From uh, the previous session that we had? It's the Questions, quality, or anything, feedback may not be content with or satisfied with. Uh, if you write messages, I can't really get to the message for this material. So you can just raise your hand so that I can give you the platform. Okay. Uh, so did Mono manage to explain to you the media, you know? No. I can get you. Les gens, on a parlé. If, if I don't Could get you... on talk, I... Could you repeat your question? Like, but... I was asking, did Mono manage to explain to you uh, for me the binome? Uh, no, she didn't. Oh, you, you didn't remind her? Okay. So we're going to start with. Uh, Okay, so before I explain the theorem the binom, I want to understand something. What is a suite? Our own suite. What is a suite from your definition that you had with mono? What is a suite in general sense? What is the gas like? How can you really get to define what a suite is? The our own suite. Somebody try to define for me what a suite is. Uh, oh, we didn't really have a proper definition of a suite, uh, but from what we've learned, I think, uh, uh, I think a sweet piece is more like uh, uh, this. Can you try to speak like up a little bit? I'm having difficulty to get you. I was saying that, uh, the, I was saying that there was no proper definition of a suite the last time we met, but from what we've been learning, I think a suite is more like, um, um, this can be more like, a sequence uh, of how you can get a certain uh, answer in a sequence of how you can uh, arithmetically add numbers, divide, or even multiply anything to come up to as in, uh, to find a certain answer to something. Okay, that's a good response. We take a lot. I can define what the suite is. Somebody said this is a series of sequences. We, the long result. Mem see, actually, a suite is actually just a sequence. So, for example, in Morocco, the different part that we actually get to find is the fact that we normally present, uh, well, let me just give an illustration before I present that. If you have um, one, comma, uh, three, comma, five. Okay, so you imagine we have this sequence up to, uh, up to N, probably up to N. So we have a sequence from this, this uh, N. So if we have this sequence up to N, no. So now, that to use uh, the plus sign. What is our common difference? Do we have a common difference here or we have a common ratio? Two. Voila. So what kind of suite is this? Arithmetic. 
arithmetic Well, it's an arithmetic progression. What of the one that we have where we have to divide the second value from the first uh, by the first value? What do you call that type of suite or sequence? Switch? Geometric suite. Geometric. Geometric. Voila, it's geometric. So in actual sense, when we have, so in Zambia, we used to use one plus three plus five up to plus n. So here in Morocco, for the fact that it's very difficult for us to precise with the numbers, we represent the first bit or the first value that we have by a form which is un. Okay, so if we have this first digit that we have here as un, we're going to say, hello, we're going to pose that the next sequence or the next uh, term that we're going to have, we're going to have what, 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 what term are we going to have as our next uh, sequence? In the sequence, we're going to have what? If it's, a, it's, a, if it's a arithmetic, what are we going to have as our next, uh, our next term? We suppose we have the first term as un. What's going to be our second term? That would be un plus uh, two. Pourquoi are you in plus two? Uh, because uh, they uh, because there is a difference of two between the numbers, so that means they. Voilà. Can... C'est très bien. C'est très bien. That's excellent. Or rather, to simplify everything, we put two here. We put two, and then here we suppose this is three. So here, if we have u n, our second suite that we're going to have is u n plus one. And our third suite, what I'm going to have here is un plus two. Up to, what, what do you discover? We discovered that actually, as it continues, it's going to be up to u n to what? To infinity, because we're not going to have, a, we, we can't say our specific value for this, uh, so it is ending up to extend limit. Okay, so in actual sense, in Zambia, we used to look at the arithmetic progression as one plus two plus three plus four up to the nth term. Here, where there is one, we put u n, where there is two, we put u n plus one, where there is three, we put u n plus two. So that's the switch. So automatically, for example, if I say u n, so the first switch here is greater than u n plus one what kind how do you call this this type of switch what do you call it okay what do you call pardon what kind of switch do you call this the tune switch Amo. These are the basics on suites. If, if you can get this concept here, yeah, suites, it's, it's a difficult thing. If we have un, if un is greater than the, 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 second, um, the second value, mean that this value is going to be greater than this one, it's going to be greater than the next one. What is happening to this type of sequence? It's doing what? It's decreasing, isn't it? Yes. It's going to be decreasing. So that is what we call a sweet de croissant and represented by that sign. The opposite of this is sweet croissant. So we're going to have a sweet that is increasing and a sweet that is decreasing. So a sweet that is in, uh, decreasing, un is greater than or equal to un plus one. And, and we're going to be proving, we're going to be proving in, the, in the next video where we're going to be having proof that this sweet is actually doing what's actually increasing. So we are going to be using this formula. Very, very important formula on suites. If you don't know this formula, two marks already out for you in your final exam or two. So very, very important formula. So is this just a general concept of suites. Suites are very, very simple. It's just, it's just a matter of you trying to, to adapt to the fact that, okay, home, I used to use these numbers. Here, I'm just representing the first term to be un, my second term to be un plus one, my third term to be un plus two, up to my n term. And of course, I know if this number that I'm having here is uh, greater than this number, mean that this number is going to be greater than this number. My suite is decreasing. We are going to find the value of n here to be very, very low. But if I have, for example, this kind of suite, 1 plus 2 plus 3, this type of suite is doing what? It's what? 
It's increasing. It's increasing. Yeah. So it's a sweet. So deja here you have something like this, a sequence like this. You already know this sweet is increasing. Haven't you done a sweet decroissant, decroissant? No. Have you done that part? No. no. Ah. ah, all right, right, right. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder you are quite thing. But this is the first part of my most. I don't know. Maybe I should teach you next week, but this is. Uh, the first part that you have to, to get to understand. But it's good, at least you already have an idea. So when she explains to you, uh, you're going to understand better. But in actual sense, this is just the most important part in, in suites. And it's good that already you guys uh, are able to define what a suite is. Uh, this, is this is the most important topic in, um, in, in analysis one. Very, very right. Kai is a lot of marks. Yeah, Kai is like 10 marks. Minimum five. So, when I was going, in, the, the first part of not really that much of fun. So I know, I know what you guys are going to define as we go to school. So, here in the, for me, the binome. So, for me, the binome is actually in actual sense. We're going to suppose, for example, we have, um, we have, um, we have Venzo here. Pardon me, Renzo. I'm going to draw you as a circle. So we have Renzo here. We have uh, Ruben here. And we have uh, Teddy over here. And we have Kalova Mutale over here. Okay. At least Kalova, I'm going to add you two eyes. Okay. So if we have uh, Renzo, we have Ru uh, Ruben, we have Teddy, we have Teddy, uh, we have uh, Ruben, and we have Kalova here. How many ways can these four be arranged? How many ways can Kalova be here, or here, or here, or here? And how many ways can, be, can uh, Renzo be here, 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 or here? How many ways can, can, can they be arranged? Uh, Is it 24? Four ways. We, it's going to be what? Four what? Four factorial. And four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one. And this is going to be equal to four times three, four, four times two, that's uh, 12 times is what? 24. So we are going to have 24 ways on how these four actually can be arranged. So if you want, you can do it practical. For example, we start with uh, Renzo. So Renzo, we've got one, two, three, four. That's for Renzo. For Ted, you have got one, two, three. You just continue and you're going to find yourself up to 24. So this is the simplest way that we can, we can actually Try to find the arrangement of this form. So now mathematics comes in. I'm going to say, okay, so if I'm, I'm able to practically put uh, Renzo, Teddy, uh, Ruben, and uh, Kalova in this actual sequence, okay, what of numbers? How can I bring about numbers for me to come up with an idea to say one is going to be my first number, two is going to be my first, second number, three up to infinity? Okay, because me as a mathematician, I refuse to say, no, why should your one be here? Why should your two be here? Why should your three be here? How did these mathematicians sit down and come up with numbers? They looked at an arrangement, okay, an arrangement. So this type of uh, organization here, this is a, a random organization, okay? It's, it's a random chance, it's a random organization. It's random that Carl was put here, it's random that Ruben was put here, but what of, if we want to specify the original position where Kalua must be, where Ruben must be, where Teddy must be, or where Venzo must be, we involve in what is called, this is called permutation, by the way, we're going to involve in what is called combination. And combination is going to be represented by the amount of numbers that we're going to be having here with a certain selection 
a certain feed business are going to be set, which is going to have a K on top. And for us to find or attribute the total number of all the objects that we have here, for example, maybe we say natural numbers, we're going to say the sum of all these natural numbers where N, which is the first digit, probably starts from zero up to an infinity, or rather we suppose the infinity that we have there is the value K. And we come up with it, what you call the uh, formula de binom, the sal attribution, the theorem de binom. So this is just the concept of what theorem de binom is. So it's about the arrangement, look at the arrangement of numbers. What's that, that question you have to start asking yourself as mathematicians right now? Why should somebody, why should people like uh, friends can sit down and just say, no, uh, the number should be put in this order? You see, you're supposed to start thinking like that as a mathematician. Why should this, why should two come, come after five? You look at uh, the special numbers that we have, like one, three, five. Those are, those are special numbers by this man that uh, uh, was studying, used numbers to study the Bible. The name I just got, it's, it's, it's a kind of a complex name. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give the feedback for the name. He studied, he tried to study the Bible. I'm not being atheist. Yeah, but he said, when I start studying and start studying whatever, is, whatever number is put in the Bible, he put on a piece of paper and came up with what you call special numbers. Special numbers are one, three, five, and seven, when I respect any that was born on, on these numbers, one, three, five, seven, and um, 11. These are very, very special numbers in mathematics. We respect these numbers with all our hearts. Okay, so that's a, just a you know, concept of a formula, the, the binom. I wouldn't want to go much into details, but rather it's just important that you guys attribute, try to understand how the organization of numbers but as you saw what those questions that I gave you, you're going to put to mind that normally you're going to be using, it's not really a formula, but in general, in actual sense, it's just about you trying to define what is going on here. So as long as you're able to define what is going on here, what is going on here you're able to answer any question that can come under a community binom. So before you know real numbers, before you get to understand what natural numbers are, integers are, you're supposed to know how they are arranged and how are they arranged. You're thinking, you have to start thinking of, okay, I had numbers, that had a presentation in that they were in general they were scattered. So how did they come up with them and put them in a, a specific order? Oh, okay. If I use uh, combinaison, that's what you should take ADMA. I show mathematics. You're going to say, oh, okay, actually, uh, combinaison is what actually helps me to put specific people or particular people in a specific order. This actually normally works in, uh, in a certain order. People that are going to be doing uh, business normally in statistics, I'm talking from Paradigm as it like, uh, probability, the probability, the theorems that are going to be using, and this is part of them. Whereby I'm going to be saying, what chance of this only this person, certain person, Natasha? Uh, who else can I say here? Yeah, bon, I can only see Natasha for now. Yeah, where can we place Natasha as a finance manager? Where can I place uh, David as a, an electrical engineer from GGM from Setat? Where are they going to? Where are they going to place? Uh, Originally, or why can I replace the big man Lawrence uh, or, or Sakala, who's, who's, whose birthday is today? Why should he be placed on the 31st of um, July out of the whole uh, all the date? We can actually calculate everything as that using um, using these theorems that we actually get to learn in analysis. So that's such a general concept of uh, the theorem that for me they you know. Let's clear the question. Is there any question? C'est clair. Oui, question? Um, clair. Sorry for this. Oui. Uh, the, the network was performing, so we couldn't join the what's well, the meeting on time. So we're a little bit left out. We found that you've already done all this explanation. Sorry for taking you back, but can you please kindly go back or maybe should we wait for the video on YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll go back. I'll I'll go back. So as I go back, those people have understood uh solve this question. We're going to start with this question. 
um, I love the explaining. Um, I would have sent book, but unfortunately, I'm not able to send you. Um, it's not everything that should be sent. Special book. So, inshallah. Okay, let's do my interface in this book. Okay. Bon, no matter what, you have you have those questions. I think in your book, you see we have questions like demonstrate que a egale a tu. We much much is very very important. You see, we able actually to show we can I can we can probably prove that one can actually be equal to two, and we can prove that two is equal to three, and we can prove that four is equal to five. This is how you you guys should be feeling math. Should be feeling math. Math math is love. Math math, math is life. Uh, find any question you know, solve it. It's going to it's going to make you be amazed. Huh? Just make math be part of you. Now nah, everything is going to go up. Um, still trying to look for equation. Equation, equation number what? We are very quiet today. Are we okay? So, very fine. Just, very just fine. Hot, huh? very, very hot. And I hope I hope your landlords have given you motor. Those in city, I, I know I know city has provided you motor. That's far. Motor, please. Ah, I haven't no, given you motor. We haven't been given anything. Oh. oh my god. So sad for you. Uh nobody more can nobody give motor in city. Given before. I can keep you for this two months. I enjoyed, enjoyed your class with you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I class with you guys. So it was lovely seeing how you guys were asking those questions. I was like, why don't they ask me these questions during, during my IT days? Because I'm not a good pro for art. I'm asking more than a lot of questions. And stuff. You know, because when, when you're a teacher, and, and students are asking questions like that. That actually gets to mean that people understand what you're saying. And I personally feel very, very happy when uh, people that I'm teaching are able to ask me questions. And say, oh, don't go anywhere if I don't understand this part. So I don't want to remain behind. I have a lot to cover up. So I don't go anywhere until I understand this part. There's this boy that I'm always talking to. Space, I don't know any explain to me. I love, I love that. Love that very much. I, I personally love mathematics. I I feel maths very very much. So if there's someone who likes maths and they show interest, ah, we're going to be best friends. We're going to be best friends. Okay, pardon me. I'm still trying to look for the question. The screen is two eleven and two fifteen. What can I say? But I think you all have this question as well. The question that I sent yesterday. We? Oui. You oui. don't have the question? We. Oui. I'll try to solve it. So we are just going to solve this first part. You're able to see the question as far. Well. This one, no? So try to solve this question for me. Just this one. Are you able to see it? Are you able to see the question? Uh, yes, yes. Ah, so just solve this first question. This one, these are just the same. Even if you solve it, if you're able to solve this one, you're able to solve everything that is here. Yeah. So the question is by using the function x, one plus x. So x, we already know the original value of x, which is a function. Functions have a decay. We're going to represent it by 
f of what? f of x. We have a function. So we present the function f of x. So this is the same as saying this f of x, and this f of x is equal to saying one plus uh, x or the power n. So we solve this. Just like I tell you to find the sum of this. So how can you find the sum of this up to the end term? Voila, vazi, travail. And uh, for those people that didn't understand, are you there now? Is it okay, okay, I can explain? Yes, you can explain. Okay, so the first thing that I, uh, I talked to was, um, I, I, I made the supposition, pardon me for the faces once again, I suppose there's Renzo here, there's a Teddy, there's Ruben, and there's Carla. So I said, how many ways can we arrange these four people that are here? And people said, oh, okay, we can arrange this by using what we call uh, the permutation method or rather the factorial, the factorial theorem. So I've got how many people? I've got one, two, three, four. So I said, okay, four factorial, which this means four times three times two times one. And four times uh, three is 12, four times two is 24. So we have 24 ways on how we can arrange uh, Renzo, Teddy, uh, Ruben, and Dakaluba. I said, okay, voila. So what of if we want to have a certain order that Renzo should just be here, Teddy must just be here, Ruben must just be here, and Kaluva must just be here. We said, okay, we have to come up with something that is called the La combinaison. La combinaison, ça veut dire que we shouldn't interchange anything. If we combine one and two, it should, it should forever just be like that. It shouldn't be two and one. So we said, d'accord. Alors, si c'est comme ça, we're going to say, we're going to say combinaison of how many terms, how many people are, for example, in this order. We are having people up to the, the nth term. So we're going to say the combinaison or to find a certain defined order of this up to the nth term from a certain bon, pardon, 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 uh, the total number of f1 of n up to supposed to be k here, pardon, up to the k term, which is I don't know what specific order I'm going to be using. I don't have to originate a k. But for us to put up to k, this means that we are going to be adding, we add this person, we add this person, because it's an increment. Okay. So because it's an increment, we're going to say the sum. Of this, like I told you the first day, I remember I said this means uh, the summation. So the summation can actually get meaning to say we have a same order, an adding order. So if I have an adding order up to the, the term k, we're going to say the sum of when n is, for example, for doing natural numbers, when n is equal to maybe zero up to the term k, which is the order that we're going to be focusing on. So with this. That this is what you call a formula the binom. That's the base of the formula of the, the binom. It's actually just talking about a specific arrangement of certain values or numbers that are going to be conquering uh, or that are going to be going to, to focus on. So in actual, so in actual sense, this is what we're just trying to, to define that is here. So I try to give an example or rather an exercise on how we're going to now uh, practice or apply this. In a, in a practical, a more practical way. Okay, I know I haven't explained a lot than, than before, but I just try to, to, to go to one or two things that I'm, I'm, from, I'm from saying. But if it's not very, very clear, yeah, I can, can still get back to me. Okay, is it okay? Yes. Okay, so we can try to, to solve the, this question. Okay, okay, so somebody said, uh, what is K? K is the, okay, so in this actual sense that we have here, K is the first digit up to the end digit. But in, in our example that we have, we, we Decide if the n, the n is the first digit up to the last digit. So k is it's, it's an interchanging value, or it's a, it's, a, it's a special value that's going to be representing where the certain object is going to be placed. Okay, so that is actually our okay. case. 
one thing of We what is kept? It's very very simple. Here, what 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 have you found? What is your okay? What is the answer that you found for summation of? K from K is equal to zero up to N C N K. What have you found? Lenzo, Namai. Erika shows Waria. Waria Kaunda. I'm still on it. I'm still on it. All right. All right. Jabez, Pazonko? Pazonko. Lillian, Lillian Musonda. Kerke shows? Pazonko. Okay. So, Bo, who can give the, the first idea? What, what, what's the first night is coming up in your mind for you to solve it? What's the first night you, 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 you come to think of? As you're serving this question. What's the first like, what's the first like, idea? What's the first object that you can you can use? Uh, maybe it's by expanding the expression itself. Yes, but for you to expand this, it's going to take you ages. We'll say some. It's a mission. So the only thing that you're going to concentrate on is you in your mind you are expanding it, but the main focus point that you're going to be having is what is the first thing that's your objective. Because you can't expand this, you can expand this up to infinity. So the first objective should be I'm just going to focus on my first thing. So what's the first thing in this case? What's the first value of, uh, of k that you're going to be using? Zero. What's the first value? Zero, trebia. And in, in this function that we have here, in this function we have in here, which one is k? Uh, it's x. Your k is what? It's x, nespa. Your k is x. Somebody even said your k is x. So the first value that you're going to be having is you suppose what? You suppose that. It, your x is equal to zero. You put one plus zero. It's going to be one to the power n. One to the power n is what you call a, a, a repetitive because one is normal repetitive. Okay, it never changes. One to the power ten hundred. It never changes. Mean that your 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 speed that you're going to be having is going to be revolving. That's going to be on the same point. So after after you have um. You have your first, your first, your first value to be k is equal to zero. But when suppose that our second value should be what k is equal to what? One. Going to be equal to one. So you put where your x is. You're going to say x is equal to one. You're going to have one plus one, which is equal to two. So you're going to have two to the power n. So the summation of this is going to be equal to two to the power n. Very very simple. It's just about you trying to open up your mind and developing one or two ideas. In that okay. sense, it's very, very simple. So the, the answer I'm going to have is to the power n. That's, that's the value. Very, very simple. Repeat so you So we have f of x, f of uh, x. Which is equal to one plus x to the power n. So U we have k as the first object being zero. Okay. So if we have our to be uh, the, the first digit in this sequence, 
or in this tweet to be equal to uh, zero, we're going to pose that our k is equal to x. So if our k is equal to x, we're going to here. So I'm going to put say one plus zero to the power n. And I'm going to have one plus zero is one. So this is going to be a repetitive because one to the power one to the power any number, one to the power infinity is actually undefined. So we can't have a, a, a number or rather a sequence to end on just us saying one to the power, one to the power n. So it'd be okay. So if we have a case concern, what of if we suppose that the highest value we are having where n the highest value to have in is what equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to say one to the power zero. To give us what? What is the power zero? One. One. So one is going to be our next well, uh, so one is going to be our next term that I'm going to focus on. Hello, over D F D R is going to be equal to R plus X. I'm going to put one away because I've already said R. R, uh, excuse me, just a minute. Let me just finish. I'll forget my, the, my points. One plus one is going to be equal to two. The power N. Et voilà, I'm going to have your two n. So normally, if you have your two n, yet whatever number we're going to put is going to be increasing. But we, like I said, we look at the least, the least switch that we can have in this sense, which is going to be equal to. This. So the summation of k is equal to zero up to n of c, k, and n. In other sense, is equal to two to the power n. Et voilà. You have your answer. Yes, was the question. There was a question. Uh, yeah, here on the first step here, you said that uh, open bracket one plus x to the power n. Then on the second one, it says open bracket one plus zero is equal to the power n. And then on the third one, how did two come about? Two. Here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Here or here? Here. Just the yes. This is one. This is one. Oh. All right. Yeah, it's one. Sorry. I think I didn't just write it well. Another question. Um, uh, how is the X, okay, when you have when you have one plus X, as in X is attached to one. No, no, because X is our variable. It's not that X, the X is not attached to one, it's a variable. We have F of X, now I suppose that we have to make it in the form of a function here. Yeah. So X is a variable. So if X is a variable, mean that in this sequence that we are going to be using, the K is actually present, in actual sense, it's just like the examiner is trying to confuse you. Instead of him saying, we put X here, he just puts K. Okay, so X is a variable. It's not an attachment to one. It's just a variable. So X is the one that is going to be increasing up to the nth term. That's what this means here. So X is not attached to one, it's a variable. Okay. Remember, you know, coefficient and variable as far. Those things, very, very right. So X is a variable. So clear, David. Okay. Yeah, boss, yeah. it's f of one is equal to n plus one to the power n. N plus one, is it? So if I had to put one, k plus one. one. Sorry, that's one. Wait. That's one. It's one. All right. One plus one. Yeah. Indeed. I'm using right. a marker to write, so it's uh, an computer. Okay. So if this, I was actually expecting you guys to solve it very, very fast. So you do me a favor. I didn't want you guys to solve these other questions, but solve this question. 
this one, solve it. And it shouldn't take you a lot of minutes because it's just the same question, that, just the same application that we had for the first question. Kindly re explain what you said on the right side of the screen. Where? The right side of the screen. I can't see clearly what's written. Here. Here we have f of one is equal oh, to one right. plus one. That's the right, ah, the right, okay. Okay. Right, the other right. Okay, let me just write, write everything here. Pardon me. Uh, okay, here. So we said f of x is equal to one plus x to the power n. And we have from our definition that our k is equal to zero. So we say, okay, if our k is equal to zero, we suppose that k is equal to x. And if k is equal to x, we are able to say our x is equal to <coughs> zero. Okay, so if our x is equal to zero, we're going to have one plus zero to the power n. So one plus zero is equal to one. So we're going to have one to the power n. But one to the power n means that every value that we're going to be putting for n, it never increases. That's going to be stagnant. Okay, that's going to be on the remaining part. So we say, okay, we pause that our n is equal to zero. So if our n is equal to zero, we're going to have one to the power zero, which is equal to one. And our one is going to be the, <coughs> the term that I'm going to be using. Okay, so we pause in the next sequence or in the next uh, suite to say f of one. Where does f we put one? f of one is going to be equal to what? We're going to have one plus one to the power n, and it gives you two. One plus one is equal to two. <coughs> and two to the power n. So, in that sense, we can end here. Why do we end here? Because we can have here. We can now have an addition of certain number of objects. Okay, we can have a lot of objects that we can, we can be having to, to, to actually add on. Because you can say two is equal to one, I want to have two. I mean, n is equal to one, I want to have two. n is equal to two, I want to have four. So I want to have something like two, four, six, up to <coughs> infinity. Okay. <coughs> so that is actually what was uh, going on here. Est-ce que c'est bon? Oui, c'est bon. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Enes. <coughs> oui. Can you say the <coughs> answer? Uh, since, uh, the, since n, uh, one to the power n, there has been, the answer will keep on recurring, it will still remain one. So, is it okay just to answer <coughs> one or you need to put one to the power n? <coughs> Because. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> Here we can't we can't just put one itself because we have got but if you look if you look at um defined suites, you're going to observe that this type of suite is what you call uh sweet sweet division. Yeah, sweet division. So the rule that is here is you can never leave out the n. You should always put the n. Okay, because it's still being a function. It's still in a form of a function. Something like here we say we we, we well, no, we can't do that here. Yeah, so you can't leave out the end, just in, in simple terms, because if we leave out the end, it no longer becomes an expression, it becomes a value. And our main goal here is that we define a value, unless we have a value, something like zero. When you have zero, we get out of this is a, a value, but in this sense, we don't aren't really looking for a value, we're looking at the same order of the function that we are having. Okay, so we can leave out the end. Is that a bon? Oui, c'est bon. Yeah, what's the what's the answer for for the second one? Uh, Mr. Mr. Ernest. Oui. Mr. Ernest. Yeah. And fortunately, we have a question. I have a a question. Yes, yes, boss. Uh, is, it that, uh, is it that uh, if it wants to be automatically, or maybe there is a certain rule behind this? At the automatically, there are rules. Why is there rules here? Like every time, every time we are solving questions, never, never just solving that. Well, we, 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 I've actually been using 
So they have any solved equation just by supposing anything. There's no any part of that I've just used the, the supposition. I'm using the rule here. What the what rule are we having here? We're having a rule of summation. What's a summation? Summation at least you're supposed to have an op always when you're putting on summation, you have to know what's my rule of summation. The rule of summation should have a sequence, meaning that I'm adding certain number of objects in a certain order up to the nth term. Okay. So your objective should be okay. I'm I'm not going to focus on up to my nth term. What am I going to focus on? I'm going to focus on probably my first term, maybe my second term, maybe my third term. That's what I really get to focus on. So the rule that I have in here is the rule of the theorem, the binom, and the summation. You're putting them together, trying to combine them. So it's just not coming out from nowhere. It's, uh, it's, it's, coming, from, it's coming from the rules of mathematics. Me, I don't, me, I don't solve questions. That's, just like that, I always, I always have to follow a theorem because every time I solve a question without a theorem, I say I have no right to prove that my answer is correct. I think you have also you have said look, looking at theorems. In analysis, don't solve any question without a theorem. Then looking at yourself is wrong. Okay. So what what answer have you found? All right, two power n. Miss Dennis. Two to Yes, oui. uh, we know, like, uh, you know what you're doing, but uh, for us, we are, I mean, me and Kelvin, we're a bit behind on where to stop exactly. Uh, you, when you found two to the power n, uh, personally, I thought you still, like, continue to be replacing the values of n because we don't know exactly where to stop. Now, what rule have you used to stop on two to the power n? That's what I would love to know. That I've used that the theorem the binom. That's what I've what I've, what I've used here. So the theorem the binom is just a certain order. Like I said, what is the theorem the binom is an order. So the number that we're going to be focusing on up to the infinity, the order is going to be two to the power n. Okay. When I was explaining the theorem the binom, because this is the theorem the binom that I was explaining to explain there, I was looking at the order, a certain given specific order. Okay, so the theorem that I've, I've applied here is the theorem the binom, which tells me to have a certain order that I'm going to be focusing. Every object should be placed on a specific order. So my order that I'm going to be focusing on is it two to the power n. You can solve up to if you want, you can suppose your your x to be to be two to be three. There's in, in your in your open problem vector, you can continue separate graph. But for me, I, I just prefer to Top up to two to the power n. Okay, but of course, for you to continue doing that, you should have the rule to say I can't end on two to the power n because of this. Me, I've said that the two is going to be this two is going to be changing because every time I put n just to be a certain number, it's always going to be changing. That's why I ended here. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, Mr. Ennis, can you? So these theorems that you are uh, mentioning, is it possible for you to just uh, send the theorems that we'll be using beforehand so that we also go through and try to know how they are applied then when solving these things, it will be uh, at least easier for us to, to even follow through because when you just mention the theorem, the binome, as we are trade uh, bossy. <laughs> That, that range <laughs> is not possible. Well, I'll try. I'll try to, to make an order for you for all the theorems. Yeah, by next week I think I'll, I'll try to make a PDF for you guys. Normally me, I don't have an order for them, but I'll try to make a list for you guys. Okay, paper girl, paper girl. I'll, I'll I'll try to work on that next book. And I was saying analysis, you know, analysis is very, very complex and bulk. So you have to really, really get to solve a lot of things just for it to, to be there. There. Bon, this one is not really, it's not really vital. Uh, I'm just going to move to the team. Focus on the most important part. Et voilà.
Uh, what did you say was the answer for the second one? Bon, my for the second one is supposed to be. Bon, let me see. Bon, my memory is zero. So you just replace. You already have a, a repeating value here. This is negative one. You just replace uh, one here. Yeah. It's going to be one minus one. It's going to be zero. Zero to the power n is zero. Normally, it's supposed to be zero here. It's supposed to be zero. Let me just give you. Bon. Yeah, but it's not very, very vital. Like, because I'm focusing myself on theorem the binom, it's not very vital for you guys. And uh, I'm not really going to explain it. This was the most important for the theorem the binom, okay? Okay. Mm. Mm. Wait, wait, that's the question for me. Uh, how is it giving us zero? <laughs> yeah, when, I'm, when I'm saying I shouldn't focus. I shouldn't focus on this because there's another theorem that's going to come in here. So if I bring in, it's, 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 it's not really that much for you guys. Okay. Unless you, you advance to another part, part of the analysis. No wonder I just focus myself on this question. Don't so, start a separate graph. If I knew that, and you need to sit down at it, start a separate graph. Okay. Mr. Ness. Oui? Yeah. Uh, a suggestion because uh, for me I don't know I'm being a bit confused I don't know on what exactly to focus. Uh, we look at a lot of things at the same time. So what if we, when Mono uh, teaches us something, then that's the thing when you come we look at the application. Uh, its application now because like this. I'm afraid I've told you uh, analysis see, seem to be difficult. I've told you, I've told you, I've told you. I think I'm going to repeat myself, I think, for the fourth time. What you are doing in the TD for the first part, it's not even analysis, okay? This is the introduction, the general part, like this is a brace. So everything I'm going to be I tell you right now is what it's just like helping you have ideas. The analysis that's on suites. So on suites, that's when I'm going to be doing more of what Mona is telling you. Okay. This is a general math. This is like general math. It's not really get to analyze. So general math is like I told you these people. These people here they learn this in grade twelve. So when they go to school, normally they focus more on on suites. So on suites, that's why I'm going to focus more on what Mono is teaching you. On the first topic, it's just general. So I'm able to come up with any question that I'm going to give you. Okay. So on suites, that's what I'm going to get to work on that. So right now, it's just opening up. It's it's wide. It's a wide topic. Okay, oh. it's just opening you up in every sector. It's open up in every sector. No wonder I'm telling you this part you're going to be in probability because it's, 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 a, it's an open part here. So it's very, very, that part that you're talking about, like where when Mono explains this and we do it, it was just on switch. I think I've, I've been saying this for, for some time now. So next week when you start doing this for switch, that's what I'm going to be like, oh, okay. I'll even be telling you on the book, you read this, I, I tell you. This is the part I want to apply on so switch because switch is the most important. The wrong. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the point uh, I wasn't aware of. Voila. So I've, I've always been so this is the base, but of course the base is very, very important. The base is important because it covers up where by a prof is going to be solving, and you see something on the body make, oh, I actually saw something like that. It gives you motivation to continue following what the prof is saying. Okay. Okay. Bon. Okay. I want to go for, for the last part for uh, using a formula to the binom, we are going to demonstrate okay, 2 to the power n plus 1 is divisible by 3 if and only if n is impaired. If we say n is impaired, what did you what did you guys learn? What is impaired? Pair and impaired. Uh, impair an odd number. Odd number is impaired. Impair impair. 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 odd number like Two, four, six, those are numbers, but you have n, these are odd numbers. 
So we're going to have put the power n where n has been defined as a odd number or a number that is not paired plus one. And this function is divisible by three by three. So if we if we use if we use um a formula binom we have business guys in right yes 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 right I'll leave this question. This, this is not for business guys, for engineering. So as I said, I'll, I'll divide the groups. I'm just going to say engineering guys in this part. So it's a prime perform over. It's the part for the engineering, the engineering students. That's what I'm just going to pass on. So when I divide you in the group, then I'm going to the question. Et voila. We have the normal dinner. Well, we have ended on seven. So if seven, we have uh, swap f the air tel que pour tout x y appartient à la carré. So like I said, because we've got a two coordinate geometry here, we've got uh, two functions x and y. This is why we're saying we've got uh, real numbers of carré. We have f of x as our function. F of x plus y is equal to if then x, I want to have f of x function plus f times y, uh, f of y function. The first question is montre que pour tout n. So we are going to show for all members of n belong to natural numbers, f of n is equal to n times f of, f of 1. So the first question that comes in here is how. What is my function f of n? That's the first thing that comes in. So the first function that has been suggested for you here is the saying n times f of one. Mean that in the normal function that you're going to be having, you're going to have on a point one. That's going to be your main focus. So for example, if we have f of x plus y here is equal to f of x plus y plus f of y. Mean that one of these functions that we get supposed to be f of zero for us to have only a single function to be equal to f of, f of one. And now uh, we're going to assimilate that. We take five minutes pause. I just, let me just make some change. So five minutes pause, we, we come back on this one.
Bon. Oh, bonjour. Bon, maintenant, je suis, je suis un peu occupé. Est-ce que tu peux me donner 10 minutes, 20 minutes comme ça, parce que là, je vais vous dire que je vais vous dire que Oui, 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 bien sûr. Ah, d'accord, d'accord. Bon, je serai prêt alors après, après 25 minutes, je vais dire 25 minutes, je vais terminer avec les choses. Oui, 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 c'est pas grave, c'est pas grave. Essayez de conformer avec moi, même si avant, avant de partir. Oui, oui, je sais, je sais bien. Ah, d'accord, on va plus le partir de là. On va voir dans le chocolat, dans le chocolat, chocolat, dans le chocolat, dans le chocolat. Bon. Ok. Ok, are we all there? Pardon me. Oui. Ah, on va plus le partir de là. Oui. It's very, very hot today, huh? Oui. Ah, oui, c'est ça, c'est ça. J'aime cette confidence. <laughs> confidence. C'est très important. D'accord. So here, we have, um, like I was explaining, we have f of n is equal to n times f of 1. So the first thing we're going to do is, bon, we have... Uh, these real numbers that are represented by this function. And uh, d'abord, on peut calculer, par exemple, une fonction f, suppose f de 0. That's an the function. So if you can find the recurrence of this function that we are going to be, to be having. Et nous savons même. Nous savons, nous savons que f, par exemple, c'est 1. If we have f of 0, f of 0, normalement, if I make a function like this, f of x, normally, if you are to, to represent this on the Cartesian plane, normally, you find that the feedback that gives you a certain equation, and that equation is assimilated to, to y. So if I say f of, for example, f of 0, I will say this is equal to say in the function of f of y being in place with zero. So I'm going to have f of one, if we say f of one, in that our y that we're going to be having is, um, okay, our x is zero plus y, so that's the second function that we're going to be having, and we're going to be having f of f of one, as uh, no, uh, f of zero plus f of r. Uh, voila. Gotten from this original equation that we have over here. Don't compare, suppose, being so. If we have all the total function here, if we suppose also for, for, for y, it's zero. I'm going to say f of zero. Is automatically just going to give us uh, zero. That's what we're going to have zero, 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 ever zero. That's going to be equal to zero. So the result that we're going to be focusing on is actually going to be looking at the recurrence. So we're going to be looking at the recurrence. We looked at the absolute, absolute whereby it was a contract. So what if we try to focus ourselves on looking at the, uh, the recurrence? So if it's uh, the recurrence that we're going to have, we will suggest for n, see n, n, ah, ça veut dire que nous savons déjà, on va bien sûr savoir que f de n, we get this normal function that we have, f de n, égale à n, uh, for f de 1, if we have n to be equal to 1, we're going to have 1 here, and we're going to have this function to be f of 1 is going to be 1 times f of 1. So normally, we're going to have f of 1 
which gives you our one here and f of one is going to give you f of one. Already it has proven itself to be a, 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 a recurrent function. So if it's a recurrent function, that are going to be that are going to be having we say it's a this is the function function recurrent. That's the main AC. See on our FDR, Savannah Donel and M shows FDR, see on our FD0, Savannah Donel and M, FD0, Savedi can see on our M plus R. Yes, convert our we are going to have F of N plus one, which is equal to F over bon, pardon, the N plus F the R. Plus F the R. Ça veut dire que on peut avoir A, pardon, N, qui compose cette fonction de S et A. Plus F. N is a good question. Oui. Uh, why did we take uh, f of uh, why did we take f uh, uh, f of zero? As in, why did uh, why as in why did we use it in our in our expression in our equations? Ah, okay. So we use uh, f the zero in our expressions to say because normally if you want to find out if this part that is here and this part is the same, if you put all the functions to be equal to zero here. X is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero. Automatically, if you put F of zero and uh, F of zero here, it's supposed to give you the same. So F of zero was just helping us to deduce that it's a recurrent function. The recurrent function means that if you apply zero on X and Y on uh, one, for example, on one, it continues to give you the same, 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 same function that you've been having. Okay, so I just suppose that, okay, if I set it my zero, is it going to continue giving me a kind function? Because I'm not, I'm trying to, to find the kind function of what I'm giving here. So now I said with the f of zero. Okay. Understood. Okay. F of one, no. I have a question, Mr. Ernest. Do you mean this n will be just part of f of x, not f of y? No. The way you are using n, does it mean that uh, it will be just part of f of x only? No, no, no. This, is a, this is going to be just uh, a alone function. Okay, because I said for the first function that I have, I have f of n. You see? I have f of n. So if f of n is my first, my first function that I'm having, because I'm seeing a recurrence of n here. I'm going to say my second function that I'm having is n plus one. That's how I develop this. But I'm not saying uh, uh, if uh, n is equal to x here and y is equal to one. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Oui. Mr. Ennis, somebody was asking. Yeah, I wanted to ask how you found the Fn equals to F1. Fn equal to 
F1 here. Yeah. Ah, okay. I pause that my n is equal to one. Okay. So I pause that my n is equal to one. So when I pause that my n is equal to one, I put my one here. So it's going to be one times f of one. Here that we have a one here. So it's the same thing as you write in a one here. And I suppose that okay, if I put my one here, I'm going to say f of n when n pardon. I think you have a point there. I'm supposed to write when n is equal to one. It's going to give me f of one. Okay. Thank you so much. I actually didn't see. Okay, I forgot to write when n is equal to one. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I get uh, I get the answer. But another question. So why are we not using the same one to put the next step on the next step here where we have n plus one so that it can give us two? Uh, yeah, if you put uh, f of, you see, we suppose again that n is equal to two, one, again. Yes. You understand? to suppose that n is equal to one. Wait, you can, you can, you, you, you can suppose, you can suppose, uh, but that, that's going to take long for you to find, to find the what is, uh, to find the next thing. Unless you are talking about, because if you put n to be equal to one, it will mean that you're supposed to find the next term again. Because already, for example, they were written down here f of n plus one is equal to f of n plus f of one, which is equal to f of n uh, of one plus f of one. Already this can mean to say n plus one times f of one. Okay, this function, for example, that I have here plus one. This is equal to what I have here. And that was just my mission of me trying to put f of n, f of n plus one. Just so that if I have n, it's going to give me this, and n plus one is going to give me something like this, only with an addition of one. So if you want to say, you want to pause again to find maybe another sequence of n is equal to one, I'm going to have both, two here. So I'm going to have, if you have two here, also here I'm going to have one plus one is equal to two, so I'm going to have two times f of one, and it's going to be it's going to be correct because they're going to have f of two is equal to two times f of f of one. Two times one is going to be two. So it's going to be f of two. It's still going to be correct. So me, my main objective is oh, more. Let me just see again. I can end my answer and make a recurrent. So the first recurrent that I'm having is f of zero. My second recurrent that I'm having is f of n, and my third recurrent that I'm having is f of n plus f of one, and that has been my objective. And the, I'm, find, I'm going to find natural numbers in my more because I have zero here. I have my one that I'm going to find. I have my two. Like I have said, if you pause n is equal to one again, I'm going to have some one of zero, one, two, I'm going to have three, I'm going to have four, I'm going to have five, up to the end term that you're having. So I've shown that for all members of n belong to natural numbers, f of n is equal to this, up to here. It's up there. You have solved your work. Okay. Uh, so it's like we are finding an expression that will show that for all Okay, okay. Voila, okay. that's just a concept that is just trying to find an expression to go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So if, if, if you are clear with uh, the first part, the same thing that you're going to be looking at, of course, here you're going to be looking at an integer. Once you, when n is an integer. So when n is an integer, for example, in this case, we use one, okay? So what do you think you are going to use if we have n as an integer? You can use what? The inverse of one, which is going to be negative one. Okay, so you can just like suppose our n is equal to negative one in fitting. You, you uh, see I need to understand. So I'm, I'm going to ask if you can just re-explain the f, the zero, uh, right. the where it's coming from okay so here my first thing that the first thing that i had was a uh, f of x plus y as a normal function so the first thing that i was like okay if i have this expression how can i prove that we remo this is equal to this and one objective that i had was okay if i say x is equal to zero but i don't want to as to be a big number for example 100 or anything can give you different values so for me to prove that this is correct, I'm going to say 
if I suppose x plus y, the whole of this I say is equal to zero. So I'm going to say f of zero is equal to us saying when x is zero and then y is zero. So I'm going to have um, f of zero here plus f of zero is the same as zero. So f of zero is equal to f of one, f of zero. And if yeah, okay, this is sum. It's a bond. So my first digit probability that I'm going to be having is zero. And I've been given my question here to say, okay, I have a first to be zero. I have my one. Let me pause that the function, the next function I'm going to be solving is going to be one. So how does it give me to be one? It can only give me to be one if one variable is zero and other variable is it uh, one. So I suppose, okay, what of if my x is equal to zero and I had f of zero plus one, I simplified this one, I had f of zero plus f of one, and f of zero deja, it gave me to be equal to zero. So f of one is equal to f of one, the bond. Hello. If I had already my function, because even if you solve it with y, it's going to give you the same, the same variable. So it's, it's not very, very essential. Hello, what of if I pause n is equal to 1? Is it going to give me f of 1 to be equal to 1? I said, Dako, I'm going to put my 1 here. I put my 1 here and I put my 1 there and give me f of 1 to be equal to f of 1. Hello, say bon. So 1 is my second variable that I'm having. But because you see, recurrence. The columns have a decay. The next variable should be coming up again. It's not your number. It's not your number with an order from zero to one. Automatically, it's supposed to be something that's going to be increasing. So we say, okay, if I have f of n, what of if I have f of n plus one? That's when I came up with it, my function f of n plus one. So if I have f of n plus one, I I made I made I made uh, this expression to become simple. I, I said f of n plus one is equal to f of n plus f of one, which is equal to I simplified this one at f of one. F of one has already been given, which is this one here. So it's already a function. So this already here is f of n plus f of one. So in actual sense, everything that I've, I was just trying to do here is to prove that if I have f of n plus one is equal to this, means that if my n is equal to n n plus one. Even here, I'm going to have n plus one. And everything that I'm going to find here should be equal to what is it here. So if I have n plus one, for example, then set car, our friend suggests to say, what if we have n equal to one here? We are going to have f of two is equal to n plus one, where so against one is going to be two. So I'm going to have two times f of one. We simplify that, I'm going to have f of two. So f of two is equal to f of two. And voila, you say, ah, that hello. I have my original value here to be example two. So I'm going to have natural numbers now. I'm going to have natural number one, I'm going to have natural number two in that order. And you have, you have shown that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So some, uh, somebody, uh, have you managed to show the second one? Wait. Um, I have a question. Oui. Um, here where I have written f of n plus one is equals to f of n plus so f of one. Then how did you simplify it when this uh where you found n f of one? Yeah, this side. Uh, I just I just simplified okay. I just simplified this part here. I, I moved this n to be to be okay. I wanted to to make a supposition to say okay, if I move my f for example, we have a coefficient that is here, which is one. So I I, I, I simplify this expression to be in the n here and I have my f of one. Just to make it be the same, consider easy, yeah, easy. Okay, may I say five cases case on on third one, Papa? Yeah, that's an order for me to make f of one and f of one to be the same here. That with any function that I'm going to be having, it should give me this original function, which is here. Okay.
Alright. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, is there uh, um, this, as in what topic is this exactly? Uh, is there a particular topic that you are supposed to be referring to? This is this is your numbers. Your numbers is very very bulky. Okay, your numbers is it's a very very bulky topic. Uh, you can even do up analysis analysis six, but we we can't actually get to to cover all the parts of uh, your numbers. So like like I said, it's just this. The thing, the thing that I'm telling you right now, they don't really seem to be clear. But when you start doing, for example, on suites, when you start doing suites, they are going to be more clear because we already have, we already have the, the bonds. Okay. So this part is on actually on new numbers. That's like we're trying to prove new numbers. That's, a, that's what we are we're trying to do here. So we, real num we first of all applied new numbers using, using uh, I think the first question that we had, we had done. But we had the, we first, first thing that we did, we are trying to pull for the rational numbers, and then we were trying to find the forms of rational numbers, and then finally now we're just trying to pull do these real real numbers, how are they now apply? Like what kind of sequence do they hold? So after this now when we when we finish when we, we're finished to apply all these real numbers and um, natural numbers and integers. That's when we, we, we get to start applying them. Because right now we're just trying to define them. Everything that we've been doing is just defining what real numbers are, what natural numbers are, and what integers are. That's what we've been doing. We haven't done a lot of, or we haven't done any application on them. So we're going to start applying them and start doing them, and start doing tweets. Okay. Manda, even when your friend asks to say, how do you get to do all these things, the theorems and everything? This is just the, this is the intro. It's the intro. When you start doing suites, trust me, it's going to be very, very simple for you because you already have the introduction. Your minds have already been minted for the introduction. So let's wait for suites next week. There will be no even question that you, you normally ask me, but like, ah, actually, this is, this is from what you did the previous TD. You have applied this capacity. Okay. So these are your numbers. The question that asked the question. So this is the introduction that we are doing. It's not even difficult in this part. The part is it's, 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 it's just because this one you're getting used with the language, the, the symbols. Otherwise, give it like a week or so, it will be, it'll be perfect. It will be okay. But it's, it's already, it's already time, huh? it's already 16. It's already 17. Okay. So in both sense, I've come to the end of looking at natural numbers, real numbers, integers, uh, what else have we done? Oh, we we looked at a bit on uh, on um, the theorem did you know. So all these things we're going to be applying them in this order now. So when we start looking at TDs and suites, every suite is going to have a defined objective. What do I mean by defined objective? Every suite is going to have a certain group of number that's going to be uh, that's going to be belong. Yeah, to belong to. Okay, so if I say, for example, a suite, if, if, if I was to say, I have a suite, a suite UN, where N belong to natural numbers. You should try to define this already, what a natural number is. With what we've done, we must be able to know, okay, before I solve this suite, have to know this suite belongs to natural numbers. So if this suite belongs to natural numbers or the values of n that I'm going to be solving belong to natural numbers, mean that it's a, it shouldn't be something to do, for example, with negative five. 
So already, as you'll be solving this suite, you find you, you, you suppose in your, your equation or your expression to be equal to, you say n is equal to negative 5. Say sure, say 4. First, you have, this shows that you haven't understood what real numbers really is. Okay, this is why this, is why this part is very, very essential for you to get to understand. I will say n apartian a norm rel. If you have a second norm rel, we have solved questions now. We have managed to prove, we have managed to show what real numbers are. They're supposed to know. So every every every, every bit of the question that you're going to be doing analysis is very, very essential. It's very, very vital. Okay. Every statement is very, very important. If you get not to understand any statement, it's going to be complicated for you. Okay. That's why I had that arranged. Normally, you don't even have a TD for this topic at your school. This topic is normally taught in just 10 minutes or 20 minutes will be done. Okay, it's not even a topic. It's not really a topic. It's just, it's just an, an introduction. And it's, it's kind of complicated. Personally, when I was in my first semester, boom, my French year, I also found it difficult because it's a topic that has got no really proper, proper direction. But you begin to enjoy it more, or understand it more when you start doing it. No wonder I've always been emphasizing on that. Okay, you want to face people to find a little bit of time because it's, it's, it's a bulk. It's a bulk. Uh, about the, but uh, suits, I think, even doing the cool, we're able to understand you on now. Like, ah, okay, this is a concept and everything like that. But for this one, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, somebody just said, yeah, suits that you started will be doing the TDs. So this, this is just an open, it's, an, it's a very, very open topic. I wasn't supposed to give you TDs, I don't even know I gave you TDs. I just gave you this that you, you you get to apply for those part uh, that are aiming high to, to do mathematics engineering, inshallah, in the future. Yeah, these are things that you're going to be working on. Otherwise, uh, just try to, to do it. Just try to, to read through the main topic. Even people that have been telling you to teach, teach, teach us back, because I know switch is, is, is the one that are going to, to have more fun. So do you have questions on new numbers, natural numbers, integers, or irrational numbers? Do you have any questions on those? Because this is the last part that I'm going to do. The next thing that that's coming in is sweet. But do you have any questions? Do you have- Yes, I have a question. What definition? Or if, do you have, but before you just come in, have you gotten one or two things on on the first the first topic or you are still as blank as you were the first day that you came in that's the most important question i know we have understood something yeah we have understood yeah. something that's that percentage that you have understood trust me okay we come on the question yes my question is even do you mean even this my proving my showing that no, I, I mean which 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 are not part of real numbers, all these numbers which we have talked about, like the question six, which is there. You mean it's also uncategorized and it's just basic? Ruben. <laughs> You, I didn't really clearly get your question. I uh, people in my own. Can you repeat? I was saying you are telling us to say uh, what the, the the numbers which we have been doing, the real numbers, the integers, the what and the what. Now, mm, the, how about these questions you gave us to say prove that? Uh, like the one for question six, which is here. So, uh, is it uh, six? Question six? Yes. See, are a base on the real positive on your Montreke. This question, I didn't even solve this question with you guys. You didn't solve them. Yes. Those, those things that I, I haven't solved this because they're not important for you. It's not really. I was just giving you the main thing that you you need as ideas to use. Okay. 
Okay. It's not essential for this one. Yeah. So those that haven't given you that important. Okay. Yeah. Yes, another question. I'm I'm just I'm I'm reading through. I'm reading through your, your comments. I just came in. Okay. Someone said to them. Okay. I hope you're going to say tweets. Yeah, yeah, you guys are playing tweets. You guys are playing tweets. So we're going to start doing tweets. You are going to have fun in tweets. Sweets are nice. Yeah. We're going to have sweets and functions. Those those will be very, very simple for you. But I'll I'll continue to ask for the last time. Do you have any questions on real numbers, natural numbers, integers, and uh Russian numbers. Yeah, part of the question is far. See. Okay. Don't see me a part of the question. We're going to start the TD for ah, uh, honest. Okay. Me, I think the, the problem is on how to come up with the assumption. Yeah. That part of coming up with the assumptions, I think, ah, that part. Yeah, like that. I think they are more so stage because as in where we are from, as in, it was just uh, something that you'd be asked. Now here you have to make assumptions. In, in yeah, yeah. Because the numbers, the numbers is just fine, but those assumptions on how to make them, they are. Okay. Mm -mm, so, you have to touch that part again. The question is, how do you get the assumptions? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So like. Like for the assumptions, uh, for the assumption that we, well, normally you, you use theorems, every assumption that you make in analysis, you have to use a, a theorem, okay? Now, when I said this, the first topic is a very, very open field topic because you find sometimes when I'm, I'm solving a question, I'll use an, a, a theorem, maybe for analysis too, when you look at Raymond, normally, for example, I'm, I'm solving any question to do with the sum, I always look at it as an integral, okay? So the assumption that is really made that I, I normally get an assumption from from a theorem. But you guys, since this one you are you are getting into, into the system, I, the, the the reason why sometimes I bring about assumptions is because I want you guys every time you be solving a question, you always think out outside the box. Okay, so you'll be like, okay, if this part is like because if I solve something direct. When you go to your school, they are probably that solve things in an awkward way, such that you, you sit two weeks, then you get to understand what you're really doing. Why is it just told you even in class where you, you maybe just told you to say, oh, suppose que, that's what I just said, and then it moves like that. Yeah. So this topic is very, very important. You, you get back to me if we do the second second TD for the switch that I don't start. If you want, you just want to get to understand more to say, oh, okay, okay, that assumption that we use data because of this. But this is an open, it's an open topic. Okay, it's an open topic, and there are a lot of things that I use because a lot of mathematicians sat down to make a concrete reason to, to have natural numbers, integers, real numbers, and, and those other things. But the most important thing that you, you grasp right now is just the main base. You just have to know what, what an integer is, what a natural number is, what a real number is, what a rational number is. How to solve just comes. Math is about development. Personally, I can say it just didn't, it didn't happen for me like in one week or in two weeks. It happened to me in a month. How? Because the more I got to be exposed, I've just been with you guys, I think, for two times, I think three times now, or, or two times, if I'm not mistaken. So already, you know, I'm not even giving you that, that thing, like study and do anything like that. It's because you are, you are trying to get into the system. Give me four weeks to be with you guys. Trust me, when the assumptions, you're going to be making them yourselves. Why? It's because you are getting into the system. Because right now, you're getting into the system. You are not, you are not yet in the system. You are still getting into the system. When you get into the system, you're going to, how it's going to come out, you don't even realize. But it's just because you're already into the system. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm helping you get into the system. It's bit by bit, okay? It's bit by bit, yeah. you're going to get there. So the assumptions are just going to come in with time. The more questions you solve, 
the more things that you get to eat, that's when the assumptions begin to flow. Okay. Is this clear? I'm going to be in a Wow. I can get you if somebody is speaking. Pas de question. Alors, if there's no any question, uh, oh, we're going to have a TD, probably. We're going to have a TD, TD one for for sweets. Uh, since you guys have already done this, I think I have to wait for you. You should do this is the part that you're going to do. I hope you'll be done doing it this week. See, no, we're not going to have a TD uh, this week so that I can give you enough time to, to revise on the first part on the real numbers. Unless, unless Mona gives me feedback to say she's done with the first topic, I mean the topic for sweets, that's when I'm going to come into the topic for them. So continue working on just the introduction. Make sure you read your book. Whatever you don't understand, we're always here to, to help you. Yeah, people people normally call me, so I get to explain to them. And yeah, I hope we're all moving at the same pace. Uh, bon semaine. Bon, bon weekend. Uh, bon weekend. Yeah, on Saturday, that, inshallah. Yeah. Hey.